holy heck, it's Monday, it's 7pm, we are live, it's Movie Nerds, again back for the fourth episode, tonight we're going to be talking movie news, uh, it's Masters of the Universe, 30th Masters anniversary. of the Universe, 30th anniversary. We've got an awesome special oh, lineup going to be awesome. with that. That's all coming up tonight on Movie Nerds. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're going to see some serious shit. So let's get straight into some movie news. Definitely. Movie news. Um, Super Troopers 2 finally oh has a release God. date. What, what? This movie... 17 had, years? Oh my gosh. It's been, been waiting a long such time. a long time. I remember <laughs> quoting this movie all the way through high school. And even after high school, Definitely. it's one of those movies that me and my friends quote all the time. And finally, the movie's getting a release date. Um, it was one of those movies that mm. had a, um, a crowdfunding thing. Yeah, that was pretty good. I love the crowdfunding uh it's the only, only way to do it. Veronica Mars did it, and that yeah. was a pretty good movie when it came out. Yeah. Um, the funny thing about this yeah. was that when they crowdfunded it, they uh, went with this huge thing, and they were going for putting Father, the guy that plays Father, into one of the back of the cars and doing all this different jazz with it, and they expected yeah. it to go over a certain period of time, like have a bit of leeway in between you know, mm-hmm. the money raising up. But it raised up so quickly. It all went you know, to their, their, I don't know what you actually call it, but their limit of what they wanted. Oh, it went um, above and beyond. Yeah, but the, like, it got to that limit within two days. And so all these plans they had kind of got <laughs> just like jacked off. And then all of a sudden, boom, they've got their money. It's all well and dusted. The movie's getting made. And finally, we have a release date, which mm. is uh, April 20th, 2018. It's next year. Oh, this wow. time, next, next year, around this time next year, which is going to be bloody exciting. The first Can't one of those first movies to come out for the summer releases, which That's, is oh, so good. That's going to be awesome. Yeah. Can't wait for that. Yeah. Um, And the next bit of awesome news is a bit of Star Wars news. Pause for a second. Awesome? This is incredible news. This is something that I've been waiting for for a long time. We talked about this two weeks ago, which I think maybe the gods of Star Wars saw movie nerds and they were like, "Hmm, (laughs) these guys are onto something. Let's get Kenobi in for a role. Oh, yes. Probably not, but maybe Kathleen Kennedy watches. That's that's my dream. Kathleen Kennedy calls up one day. We love you, Kathleen. Chaz and Ryan, look, I love what you guys are doing with movie nerds. I want you guys to be in the next Star Wars movie. I'll do any role. Whatever. I'll be a footstool. She can just rest her feet on me. I'll lie on the ground. I will fit into an R2-D2. How good is this? Let's talk about Kenobi. This movie's kind of going to be possibly directed by Stephen Doldry. He's mm. a dramatic director. Uh, he did The Hours. He did The Hours. He did yeah. uh, Billy Elliot. Um, Love Billy Elliot. And uh, I feel like, I think, you know, if he, based on his direction of what he's done before, his ask, uh, Oscar-nominated movies, Oscar-winning mm-hmm. movies, very dramatic um, films. Oh, there he is. This movie is probably going to be something dramatic. If they're thinking him, then it mm. has to be big on scale, big dramatic film. It has to have Ewan McGregor, please come back, oh, mate. How, how could they Look, not? He said in 2015 that if they're going to do a movie from episode three to four yeah. and just bridging that gap of the 20 years, like, you know, he was on the Junes, June C. Yeah. What are you doing in the June C for 20 years? <laughs> you know, are we going to... Oh, look, another thing, Ewan McGregor, we're fighting for him. Joel Edgerton. Yeah. Uh, Is he going to come back as Uncle Owen? I'm not really fighting for Not that crispy. You are, you not are, crispy but, Owen. Yeah. You maybe are, but, uh, yeah, maybe we so see much, Baru. Man. Maybe we find out if he was um, hovering in the background. We might see a Luke Skywalker, possibly. Yeah, maybe a young Luke Skywalker. That definitely, that's definitely oh on the cards. Um, you know, there's so much potential they could do with this movie, which is really cool. Um, it's a little bit. I mean, part of me mm. really wants them to take a character that we haven't really seen in the Star really? Wars universe too much at this point because they're they're playing it safe. They're playing it safe. Mm-hmm. They've got you know. Um, uh, <laughs> sorry, my brain's not working. Obi Wan Kenobi. Then you know they've got Rogue One, the story we already know. There's rumors about a, about a Boba Fett, Fett movie coming up. And look, I understand that you're feeling this way because you want a Nine Numb movie. Exactly. I want. You a movie. want a trilogy just all about <laughs> Nine Numb. I kind of do a little bit because it'd be so stupid, but it'd be great. Um, and they've got the Han Solo movie coming out too. And I just think they're mm. playing it safe. I want to see them make a movie of a Star Wars character or a Star Wars mythology or something from the EU um, wow. that we haven't seen yet. And well, you know, I'm he looks amazing. Excited. Oh, I'm so excited about it. It's He's been... what, 47 now? 47, 48. So I think that's the perfect age for him to jump into this role. It's just the right amount of time yeah. to see a sort of an aged, but not too old, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yeah. And if they pick anyone else, it's going to be a massive uproar if we don't have oh, Uncle I don't, I don't Ewan. I don't think it's a question. He was fantastic at Transporter too. So no, wait. The, the, Transporter 2? What am I saying? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure where you're going with that one. Anyway, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> all right. Um, and All right, let's move on to... No, the movie was a movie that he did. Which one? 
Oh my god, the one where he's on drugs and that. Oh, transporting. Train. I said transporter. <laughs> so he's going to be with uh, Jason Statham yeah, the whole time and driving around cars. That's the one but I he's on drugs as well. Yeah. Um, that was a good movie. It I, was good. It was that good. went over my head. Yeah. It went over all of that. Sorry, you and uh, let's just forget right. about that and talk about Obi Wan Kenobi. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, let's move on to the 30th anniversary. Oh my God, I can't now, wait for this. Not of the toy line or not no. of the uh, cartoon, but. The live-action Masters of the Universe movie starring uh, no other than Dolph, Dolph Lundgren, Lundgren, Frank playing... Langella, and Monica from Friends. Yeah, Courtney Cox. The Coxster. Um, yeah, she plays the lead female character in the movie. Um, let's check out this awesome clip oh, that yeah. I'm not taking any credit for. We can't take the credit for. This is awesome. Have a look. Have a look. Grayskull is our... Look at those Crazy. Look at you. I'm sorry, but Cannon. I can, I Cannon, get, one of the last movies because this well, movie made no money. And so once this movie was actually released, it made nothing. They expect they at the end of this movie, um, you know, Skeletor pops his hands out of the lava and he's like, I'll be back. But of course there was no back. There was no Master there was Universe. no back and they ended up using the uh, the, the whole set for Master Universe 2. On Cyborg. Yeah, on Cyborg, that's right. I thought you were going to say this uh, mystery movie that I've never seen of <laughs> Master of the Universe 2, but of course you're talking about Cyborg. Look, I'm, I'm telling you now, Dolph Surely Dolph Lundgren, George Lucas had to call these people at one point and say, look, you can't take my Stormtrooper's idea. I mean, they've got the Stormtrooper body, basically, and then the helmet is Darth Vader. What's going on? Oh, but it works. It works. I showed this to my missus for the first time. She's never seen it, and she hated it. She actually really enjoyed it. I think it's pretty terrible. Like there's parts of it. Oh, I love. there's that's uh, Monica's mother in Friends. Yep. So they sort of <laughs> join back together. Um, there's parts of it I love. Like I love all the costuming. I think they got that perfect. Like for the '80s, oh, I mean, I probably wouldn't have expected them to go, you know, shirtless, pantless. You know, running around in underwear, Dolph Lundgren playing um, Adam, Prince of Eternia or He-Man. But they did it, and he's got his giant mullet. It's all perfect. I loved uh, it. And then Skeletor's makeup is unreal. Oh, Langella. He only, he only did this because his kids love the toy line, and he wanted to just do a movie for his children. And yeah. so he jumped into the role of this, which I think is fantastic. Look, anyone who's a fan of the, the toy series, the comics, the cartoon, you can watch this and not be biased and actually enjoy it. And people who, you know, haven't seen it. I know people are like, like oh, don't watch it. Avoid it, avoid it. Why avoid it? It is good. It's partly terrible. It's, yeah, really I terrible? It's, I well, wouldn't use that. I would be like, it's good and it's bad, but the good outweighs the bad. I disagree. It has, it has, it has a lot of things what going for it, I think, in, Alf likes it. in the acting and the costuming. <laughs> Um, but I really wish the movie was set in Eternia, the home planet oh, for well, he They tried that, but it wasn't going to happen. They didn't have enough money. They couldn't even get Orko or Battle Cat. So. Well, that's the issue, isn't it? Maybe you shouldn't have made the movie. But they got Gwildor. Gwildor took the, the spot of Orko. But Gwildor wasn't a person before this movie, right? So, I mean, they've just made up characters to replace other ones because they couldn't do the special effects, which is all well and good. <laughs> Look, at the end of the day, it has its cool moments. I yeah. wasn't a big fan of the synthesizer, the key. Um, the Cosmic Key didn't like it? No, I wasn't a big fan. But How good is that day, artwork? It's incredible. Master Universe has hit its 30th anniversary, which is massive for a movie. It's still rememberable. If you, if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend checking it out. Yes, yeah, I'm it. 99% sure it's on Netflix um, yep. because I watched it recently and I don't remember how I watched it, but it was either on Stan or Netflix. Yeah. We'll find that out perfectly. Excellent. For you. Um, what do we got next? Oh my God. One of my, I've been waiting for this for a long time. Classic collectibles. We're revisiting toy lines from like the 80s, 90s, maybe even the noughties. Basically, if it was a big toy line, then we're going to make a show about it. Oh, yes. And uh, this series is just going to be talking in depth about that toy line, how it was made, who created it, uh, how much the toys sold for, and, and wherever it went to. Yeah. Um, and the first steps we've got is. He Man and the Masters of the Universe. Yes! Let's hit to that clip right now. <laughs> By the power of children growing up in the 1980s, He Man was like no other action figure they've ever seen. A muscle bound hero truly ready for battle, with knees bent and arms flexed. 
He-Man and his team defending the universe against the evil minions of his archenemy, Skeletor. Store shelves were flooded with collectibles. Kids and adults alike couldn't wait to get their hands on them. Transcending nearly 40 years in our mainstream pop culture. But where did it all begin? Created in 1981 from the concept art from illustrator Mark Taylor and Roger Sweet, channeling the fantasy paintings of Frank Frenzetta and turning a simple big gym action figure into a muscle-bound barbarian, Roger Sweet presented the He-Man concept. The models were a barbarian, a soldier, and a spaceman. Out of the three concepts, the barbarian version He-Man was chosen to be the basis of the toy line. From early sketches and concepts, the final products came out quite close to what they envisioned, with brief descriptions of the characters would appear on the toy line's unique packaging and incredible box art accompanied by mini comics, with each figure exploring the lore of Masters of the Universe. Mattel also hired comic book writers such as Donald F. Glutt and artists like Earl Norum to create additional characters. Their backstory, posters, package inlays, box art, the first wave to hit the market was the 8-back, featuring Man at Arms, Zodiac, Skeletor, Merman, Stratos, Beastman, Teela, and of course, He-Man. However, the Masters of the Universe franchise would become better known through Filmation's He-Man and the Masters of the Universe cartoon series. In the fall of 1983, running 130 episodes through two seasons until the end of 1984, followed in the spring of 1985 by the theatrically released The Secret of the Sword, introducing He-Man's long-lost sister, She-Ra, which then followed in Mattel's toy line, Princess of Power, aimed at bringing in a young female demographic. Let's attend the Crystal Castle. Those boys want to spoil our game. You go away and play. Shira's is our adventure game. <laughs> when danger is near, call for Shira, the princess of power, and her friends. Having amassed 70 plus figures in the He Man line and 30 plus for Shira, with various accessories and vehicles, plus lending their merchandising rights to hundreds of different items, from board games to magazines to children's books, they made everything, which was also released worldwide. In present day, we have seen a resurgence in the Masters of the Universe line from companies like Matty Collector, keeping the franchise alive in the 90s, and also Super 7, taking the line to new heights in our current day. And let's not forget Sideshow Collectibles and Pop Culture Shock, breathing new life in our beloved characters from my childhood in the high-end range of collectibles. For me, I'll always treasure my memories from He-Man, from my themed birthday parties to the joy of getting figures for Christmas and my birthday. It was definitely a time to grow up. Stay tuned for the loudest adventure in the universe. He-Man, most powerful man on Eternia, now has a mighty Thunder Punch. Thunder Punch He-Man's loaded with caps and ready for battle with the evil Spycor. Spycor's fearsome and gruesome with his deadly spikes, huge club and telescopic weapon arm. Has He-Man finally met his match? No! With a from Thunder Punch He-Man, Spycor down. Whoa, you did that. That was awesome, man. Yeah, good man. job. Nice one. I, I love my collectibles. That. So we're talking about He-Man and my good friend Michael Wayne sold me these amazing figures. Not to be confused with Bruce Wayne. Possibly. <laughs> I've got the commemorative edition released 17 years ago. Holy crap, man. This They're in the awesome. original packaging, but with the commemorative uh, shell on them. <laughs> I love that you don't show me this before we actually um, <laughs> go, to the sh go to the live show. So I've got He-Man. I've got Skeletor. These are absolutely incredible. And these are limited edition numbered, I can see the top. Yeah, there's only uh, 15,000 of those made in the world. Your one says one of 15,000 though. Wait. Number the, one. The mother load. Pass these. I've got the mother load right here. Here we go. So I brought these babies over. <sighs> oh, Panthor and Skeletor. Yes, Look awesome. at that. So but I'm just going to open this there right is now. There's more, cool. guys. No, please don't open it. Please don't. <laughs> I would not dare, man. This is so good. He-Man and Battle Cat. Dude. These are incredible. Matty Collector was really, this. really onto something. Oh man! You know, I did say the '90s. I meant the 2000s and noughties. So, Matty Collectibles came around. They re-released these figures, and they wanted to, this you is... know, I think it was the first 12 of the uh, 
the 80s line, which still blows me away now. Guys, if you have these mitt and box from the 80s, they're worth thousands, thousands. I, I looked online for a, uh, a carded, a carded uh, Mr. He-Man. So we'll bring this up, Mr. okay? Mr. He-Man. So let's talk about this, He-Man. AFA graded, sealed, Leonardo DiCaprio owned one. I saw one online, <laughs> $9,000 someone wanted for it, 9,000. I'd rather stick with this one, a re-release, so I'm happy. Who was, who was your, look, I want to ask you, who was your favorite, getting rid of He-Man and Skeletor, who was your favorite in the He-Man line? Character, Cyclone. I don't know why, but I think, I'm pretty <laughs> sure his name's Cyclone, don't get me wrong. He kind of looks like He-Man, he's got a terrible haircut, just like He-Man, but he's like blue. And no, he's no, got... that's Faker. No, not Faker, not Faker. Faker that was He-Man, but blue. Cyclone, no, he's Cyclone, I'm sure his name's Cyclone. No, he's... no, he's completely blue, he's, no, he's He-Man. people, I know who Faker is. <laughs> different people, I promise you. I'm sure his name's Cyclone, and you, in, the, in the toy, you can spin him, and his whole body spins around. Oh, yes! Um, yeah, he was a baller character to play with. I don't remember ever seeing him in a TV show, but you know, he might have been in there for a Man. couple episodes. But yeah, I like that toy, because I always remember just spinning it around. I'm sure his name was Cyclone. Oh, I loved uh, Orko. Orko was the man. I loved him so much. It's hard to find a figure of him in good condition, especially with all, like, you put the thing in the back and he starts spinning around. Yeah, yeah. But I've got the pop culture shock, uh, He-Man statue with the beautiful, Dude, that thing, that beautiful thing Orko insane. attachment. I love this show and tell part of the show where you're just like, yeah? I'm going to bring in my toys and show and tell. <laughs> I love it because I just see a whole lot of crap that I've never seen before and yeah. I want those. And if you're not looking carefully, I'm going to steal them after the show. You can have a few. <laughs> I like reliving my past. Nostalgia is the best thing about life, I think, you know. But uh, oh, what are, you gonna, are we going to throw a photo yeah, up? Yeah, throw of, this photo. Let's throw this photo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I brought my Alf in when I was a kid. Mr. Alf from, uh, was it Melmac? I don't know. You're asking me stuff I have no idea when, about. Weren't you the biggest fan ever? No, I wasn't. But I didn't you, like Alf. But I did have a toy that you push the button okay. and you'd be like, that's Cyclone. Oh, there he is. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Look at this guy. Actually. Look at this guy. Look, see, I told you, he's got the He-Man haircut and he's blue. Do I have him in here? The no. other guy has no, an uh, orange haircut, Faker. See, I know what I'm talking okay, about. Okay, I thought I actually had him. Yeah, well, you don't. Oh, but I do have. Ugh. I got my Crotos. <laughs> the photo before when I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh, this is from when I was a kid. So, yeah, pretty awesome. <laughs> but they're, they're all worn away, so whatever. Um, well, unfortunately, that brings us to some bad news oh, of today. Okay, yeah. Um, so, bad unfortunately, news. today we lost the comedic legend, Jerry Lewis. Jerry. He was 91. Um, we're going to roll a clip right now for you. Oh, man. So, today we mourn the loss of one of the most iconic comedic actors of all time, Jerry Lewis. Jerry Lewis was best known for his slapstick comedy approach to such films as The Nutty Professor and The King of Comedy, which also starred Robert De Niro. Though he passed away today from the age of 91, we'll always remember him for his laughter and his countless roles and dedication to comedy. Jerry Lewis, man. It's a big loss. Um, it is. He, he was... might not have been the nicest man you know, as he aged on, but yeah. you know, his roles when he was growing up and you know, through his 30s and 40s with Dean Martin, and stuff were yeah. just amazing. Um, but let's let's just get a bit more less morbid and talk about something I just want to bring up with this week's Ryan's rant. Um, and really, that, I can't. I it's, have to. I have to. It's have not to a trumor. It it's it's not a trumor. It's a, it's a Ryan's rant. Uh, and <laughs> that is just these release dates of films oh, these yeah, days. Um, we are talking about movies that they usually run by Australian distributors. Um, now, I don't mean any offense to Australian distributors. Please still send us to movies. Yes, please. But <laughs> get on the ball of American release dates. Like if we are, if there's a movie coming out yeah. in America, it should be coming out the same day, if not you know, earlier or something. So we get the same experience as America. We live in the internet world. Well, it's hard though. Where people are, sp well, it's not. It's like, it's hard for Australia to to really catch on to this because you know what Planet Why of the Apes it? was released weeks before Australia and we ended up missing out so it's like is it relevant to really write a review or do a video about it well that's what I'm when talking about when yeah, there's exactly. about a thousand people out there already done it before you yeah and then like you've also got things like um, spoilers like we live in a world of Facebook oh, and the internet spoilers and people are the worst, will just man. jump on and just say like I have heaps of friends from America and heaps of friends from other mm, parts of the world same. and they'll be like oh I saw blah 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 today this is the ending and it's just like 
well, crap, man. Why aren't we getting these movies on time? And yeah, I, I can't give you a reason. I don't know what that reason is. I don't have the answer for it. But what I want to try and suggest is that people obviously don't spoil things. But yep. if there's a way that you can contact Roadshow, mm. you know, Universal, um, Sony Pictures, Paramount, who are the people that are in Australia... Yeah. Say, release these movies on time. I don't want to see them, you know, months and months later. Like Batman, the anim- um, the Lego Batman movie. That yeah. was four months after it came out in the States. We finally got it. Oh my the God. Lego movie was six months after, after the States got it. Mm. Um, there's. But you know what was good though? The Mummy. We got to see The Mummy. We had a premiere in Australia. But that has nothing to do with the release date. The release date, I mean, for that in general was... No, but I'm getting to something. More premieres in Australia, please. Not all these weird countries. I understand you want to do in America, but all these other countries, well, not named because I don't want to discriminate, <laughs> make all these premiere, world premieres in Australia because us Australians, we like movies. We do. But the unfortunate thing about that is we're a very small number to the worldwide gross of movies and that Damn is it. why they don't do it, um, unfortunately. It. But, you know, people like Tom Cruise, they want to come out for a holiday. Here's a place to holiday. It's a yeah. holiday destination. <laughs> Sydney, Australia, my backyard... The movie the premiere destination ever. <laughs> yes, I would say ever as well. Um, and anyway, we're going to wrap Maybe up the one show. Day. Look, I want to jump in also with TV. You know how they say, oh, we're going to fast track it. Uh, it's usually online for the people who do do it. You. Uh, no, I'm not like that. <laughs> this guy here. But you know what oh, I mean? Man. Like it's, we can only hope for the best yeah, at the yeah, end yeah. of the day. Well, I just, I just, I would just love movies to come out at the same time. I don't know why we're still at this, you know, behind, lagging behind. I don't get it. But let's wrap up the show okay. <laughs> with a giveaway, which is coming straight yes. from your collection. It is, is it is, guys. Check this out. It's the 30th anniversary. Uh... Oh, that says 30th. I thought that said 3D. Um, no, they are Wobblehead. masters of the universe, wacky wobblers. We've got Beastman and Skeletor to give away, yep. um, and these guys can be yours just by heading over to our fa- uh, YouTube, sorry, which is right below here. YouTube forward slash. So is it any good? And you can hit that subscribe button, and automatically yeah. you will go in the running for this. And in the next week's show, we'll pop up your username right here, and you will know if you've won that. So you don't need to worry about your address. You don't need to worry about your real name. Yeah, we'll sort just, it all out. We'll put your YouTube. Username right there, and we'll send it over to you with a good little kiss from me and Draz. Beautiful. Done. Done and dusted, guys. Get into it, and you'll enjoy. So that wraps us up for another episode of Movie Nerds. It was a bit of a quick one this week, but next week we've got so much more stuff happening. Oh, a lot uh, of it's stuff. It's going to be insane. So every Monday mm-hmm. night, make sure you tune in here at our Facebook. So that's facebook.com forward slash so is it any good yep. um, for Movie Nerds live at 7 p.m. My name is Ryan. I'm Draz. And this is Movie Nerds.